Hi, uh, at InVivo, we focus solely on traumatic spinal cord injury. And we focus on acute spinal cord injury. We have a product, a scaffold in the clinic that I'll describe for you. And also in preclinically, we have a project for, with stem cells on a scaffold for chronic spinal cord injury. We're a publicly traded company. Uh, there are about 12,000 cases a year of acute spinal cord injury. And we have in clinical development the scaffold that I'll describe for you. A similar scaffold covered with neural stem cells we're developing for those patients with chronic spinal cord injury. You can think of the uh, acute uh, spinal cord injury product almost as a Band-Aid, which is designed to promote healing. Here you see a picture of the scaffold, the white thing in the cylindrical in the Petri dish, you compare it in size to a quarter. The scanning EM image shows that it's about 85% porous air, or so it's easily hydrated, and it uh, disappears in the body in about a month. The p uh, skeleton of the scaffold is made of PLGA, the same thing you find in bioresorbable sutures, and it's coated with polylysine to promote cellular adhesion. The, the simple concept of appositional healing is that if you cut your lip or uh, your skin, you suture the skin together to bring it into apposition because it heals better than if it's all wrinkly and, and uh, corrugated. In a three-dimensional space, such as the spinal cord, though, in a cystic uh, degenerative lesion, the, and especially in a large species like a human or a, a pig, the appositional healing won't occur and you get cyst formation. And the scaffold fills that space and allows a skeleton on which the tissue can slowly grow in. The scaffold uh, is very permissive for the growth of uh, neurons and glial cells. If you take a primate and you do a hemisection of the spinal cord and you implant the scaffold material in the hemisection wound, you find much more remodeled tissue if you implant the scaffold. And if you look at that remodeled tissue that replaces the scaffold, you see that, and you do immunohistochemistry with neurofilament or myelin stains, you see that uh, myelinated uh, axons traverse that remodeled tissue. So it's a neuropermissive uh, scaffold material that's biodegradable. We've studied the scaffold in the rat contusion model, which is the best model for human traumatic uh, spinal cord injury. And you can learn a lot just by looking at the histology. So on the upper left, you see normal histology with the gray matter that contains neurons and the white matter that are the axons. At two hours later after contusion injury, the gray matter is hemorrhagic and there's hemorrhagic necrosis. The neurons are almost all dead and you can't hope to save them anymore. The white matter, on the other hand, which is not very vascular because it's not as metabolically active, is still largely intact. At 24 hours, you can see complete necrosis of the gray matter. The white matter still looks pretty intact. In our clinical trial, we plan to implant the scaffold in that two to 24 hour window. If you let, follow the natural progression of spinal cord injury, you see get, that you get first microcystic and then macrocystic degeneration, which is something we want to prevent. So we do a dorsal myelotomy, we lavage out the necrotic material, and we implant the scaffold, as you see on the right. The results histologically are quite striking. On the control animal, you see a large cyst, and you see pressure atrophy of the white matter. In the scaffold-treated animal, you see that the cyst uh, is reduced by about 80 to 90 percent. You can see that at quantitated in the, in the bottom left bar graph. And white matter is spared because there's a lack of secondary cystic pressure atrophy of the white matter. And you get an increase in a central glial 
remodel tissue in the scaffold implanted uh, animal. We did not see functional improvement in this experiment. One of the reasons why we didn't is probably because there's a big variability in the correlation between white matter and locomotor capacity. Although it's well known and well documented that increasing amounts of white matter favor increased locomotor activity. So the, uh, one of the important reasons to prevent post-traumatic cyst formation is that cysts can expand, they can ascend, they can cause ascending paralysis, and they cause pain, and they're very hard to manage surgically. It, because this is a device, we've see, received from the FDA a humanitarian device exemption, which means that we have to establish probable benefit for approval. We've initiated a phase one study. Uh, there are three sites open for enrollment at this time, and we're waiting for our first patient to enroll. We'll, well, the primary is the end point of this study, of course, is safety, and we'll also be looking at the standard neurological uh, parameters. The second uh, project we have is the a similar uh, neurospinal scaffold, but with a slightly different geometry and chemistry on which we will place neural stem cells and use it for chronic spinal cord injury. The scaffold is designed to be an improvement over the injection of suspensions of uh, neural stem cells. Here you can see fluorescent rat neural stem cells on the neurospinal scaffold. On the right-hand side, you can say that they are differentiated and attached to one another. So one of the differences between injecting suspensions of round neural stem cells versus putting them on a scaffold is that we can allow them to pre-differentiate in vitro, and we can add growth factors, and we can differentiate them to whatever neuronal cell type or mixture of glial cells and neuronal cells we want. Here are human stem cells cultured on the left-hand panel on 2D. You can see the, the green uh, neurons and the red astrocytes. And on the right-hand side, you see them in the 3D image from uh, after, when they're growing on the scaffold. The surgical approach we are using in large animal models, small animal models, and we hope to use in the clinic, is one that has been used neurosurgically in the clinic before, which is to remove the glial scar, which is important because the glial scar functions as a barrier to neuronal regeneration, to replace the cavity created surgically with the scaffold on which has been created the desired phenotype of neuronal and glial cells. So to summarize that, you get a chronic injury with a glial scar, we surgically remove the glial scar. We implant the scaffold, uh, which has created sort of a tissue created of, uh, neural, by neural stem cells, ex vivo. The scaffold will bioreabsorb, and we hope to create connectivity across the injury site. Uh, in summary, at the company working on both acute and chronic spinal cord injury, we think that a convergence of novel surgical techniques, which will be required for our uh, therapy, along with scaffolds that are suited for both either acute or chronic injury, and with stem cells, offer the best hope for recovery for patients with severe spinal cord injury. Thank you.